Even though it's Saturday, we actually had quite a bit of Tesla stock news and this one analyst, oh, oh. Ah, I was stunned. Let me explain. Can Accord Genuity reiterates their Tesla stock buy rating, as well as their $293 price target. Don't get too hung up on the delivery number. It's less relevant this quarter. We are also still waiting for the Cybertruck to hit the streets. With new products in Q4, not to mention a UAW strike with positive implications, a new gigacasting technology that could help margins, and an Optimus robot that appears to be coming alive, our message is, stay focused on the medium to long term and ignore potential downside volatility in the Q3 delivery number. Lots of good stuff is happening at Tesla. Did I read that right? An analyst from this firm is telling us to focus on the long term or at least medium term and it even mentioned the Tesla bot? That is quite stunning to see. However, what's also stunning to see is their uh, Tesla stock price target. They think it's only $293. And usually the way price targets work is uh, these companies figure out how much Tesla will make, let's say, in 2026 or 28 or 2030 uh, in terms of profits. And then they figure out how much would we pay for these profits today? In other words, this is how much they think it is fair to pay for Tesla stock. So they really like Tesla stock, but they only think that it is worth $293-ish today. But I am willing to pay more than $293 per Tesla share. My valuation model on Patreon will show you exactly how much. You may see that by clicking on the link down below. I'll just say I'm really happy buying Tesla stock at these ridiculously low prices. Overall, this is stunning in two ways. One is that they are thinking long term and seemingly they do put some upside maybe from the bot, maybe not. Uh, but it seems so based on their language here. But if suddenly more and more Wall Street firms start talking about this potential huge upside in the future, don't be surprised if these price targets also start coming up. Which will happen most likely after <laughs> the stock uh, rises. Usually the stock rises first and then the price targets follow. Not always, but that's usually the case. Occasionally though, we do get these research notes like the one from Morgan Stanley with a price target of $400 and that alone moved the stock by quite a bit. And here's one more stunning fact. This Canaccord Genuity Analyst is number 8,242 out of 8,500 Wall Street analysts. Well, if he stays bullish on Tesla stock, eventually he'll rise up a little bit. They are delivering cars right off the line. This has to be a good sign for inventory levels, says James, to which Omar responds by saying there were no exact matches in inventory anywhere in California, so they had to make me a new one from Fremont. And that's awesome. I mean, it's not like there are hundreds of variations in options. This is bullish, says James. I am keeping my expectations low here, but James correctly predicted back in January when Tesla cut its prices by a lot that that was very bullish. However bullish this is, it is good news. Keep in mind though, we are talking about Model S here, not about a Model 3 or Model Y. If real, this is a big deal as Cybertruck prepares to launch. First things first, breaking the reports of Ford canceling Lightning EV orders across the country due to dealer stock. Unclear just how widespread this is at the moment. Going to disclaim this post as unconfirmed until I get more details. And here he is confirming it's real, he's just extra cautious. This could mean a few things. For potentially could be facing a recall or uh, there are production issues due to the strike or Ford is cutting its production because they are losing a lot of money. And whatever the outcome from the strike is going to be, it is going to be more difficult for Ford going forward. They lose money with every single EV sold and yet they will have to pay even more money to produce their vehicles going forward. Q3 consensus deliveries have now dropped to 456,700 based on the latest Bloomberg consensus number, which 
helps Tesla avoid a miss which the media would blame on demand issues rather than the more accurate Model 3 Highland transition and factory upgrades which are supply issues. The Q3 divergence between minimum and maximum estimates which vary between 428,000 and 498,000 which is wild, is as wide as I have ever seen. Troy Tesla continues to raise his Q3 estimates into the Q3 close. See his Patreon for specifics. I am at 445,000 deliveries for Q3, says Gary. And usually, uh, Troy and Gary, at least the final estimates, usually these are not too different. Troy's track record, however, is a bit better than Gary Black's. So Troy raising his delivery estimate is good news, really good news. Ian Tesla has now published their Compile consensus, which is usually the most accurate because it has the most analysts in it. And the number is 455,000 deliveries. Gary says, we continue to expect investors to overlook any reasonable miss. So if the miss is up to 10,000, he doesn't think that the stock would really react because of the factory shutdowns and the Model 3 transition. The exact number is 454,809. And for this year, the expectations still remain a little bit over 1.8 million. Next year, uh, 2.3 million, and then 2.87 million, 3.5, and 4.3 million. And the number of analysts in this consensus is 25. I am looking forward to Monday when we get to see the actual numbers. In the last two quarters, the consensus number underestimated the actual deliveries, but four quarters before the last two, yeah, it was a miss every time and a few quarters before then they're all beats. Troy thinks in Q3 a miss is likely and my best guess is it will be around 3%. So based on that Troy's final estimate should be around 441,164. And Sawyer posted his delivery estimate as well, which is about 445,000. So he's also expecting a miss. But the way I look at these estimates is not so much that Tesla missed, but more that analysts missed. It's true for both the upside and downside. Beats and misses. Piper Sandler analyst Alexander Potter reiterated an overweight rating and a $300 price target on Tesla stock. Dan Ives from Wedbush also adjusted his delivery expectations. Instead of 462,500, he's now expecting 440,000 deliveries. This is really useful for us to understand the progress that Tesla is making in Giga Berlin. This chart is a live VIN chart, vehicle identification numbers. Uh, for Berlin made Model Y registered in Norway, it's pretty cool. This helps to understand the production rate. The chart tracks numbers from the end of March until pretty much the present day. Ideally, what we would want to see here is acceleration of higher VIN numbers. So we want the VIN numbers to be as high as possible because it indicates that production is ramping up. The Peterson Museum is auctioning off a low VIN 2024 Tesla Cybertruck during their 29th annual gala on October 7th. The event will be hosted by Jay Leno. Gala tickets start at 1750 and go up to thirty thousand dollars for a premier table you can be the first one to own a cyber truck well maybe not the very first person but one of the first certainly and uh, a 2024 cyber truck simply means that it uh, it is probably produced in october or november of this year there is a lot of talk about this clip and many people say that he should have turned on the turning signal before he turned the steering wheel, with which I agree, but that assumes that everyone is a good driver. I think many people are not good drivers, and I think many people turn on their uh, turning signals sort of a bit late. So to some degree, I think it's a bit of an issue for some people. But no stock for gear shifting, I think, is a bigger problem. Leave a comment down below. Do you like no stocks or stocks? I mean, how much money is Tesla saving here? And is Tesla losing any sales because of this? Probably Tesla will lose some sales, but the question is how many? So leave a comment down below and let's see what the consensus is. If you were to buy a vehicle, would you want it to have stocks or it's not a big deal to you at all? Remember Tesla Gigabeer? 
seems like maybe it was an Easter egg. This is the land that Tesla is working with uh, in Giga Mexico. And this is perhaps supposedly a Tesla robo taxi. Ian Bradford raises a pretty good question here. Some say the concept car is ugly and they would never get one. But would you also never get in one because you wouldn't own it? I haven't really covered this one new thing about the Model 3, and that is that the steering is much lighter now. If I just drive normally, I do prefer lighter steering, but if I'm driving a bit faster, I do like it when it's a bit heavier. So to me, this is a welcome change because usually I just drive normally. I'm not uh, rushing anywhere. FSD is able to navigate on a dirt road next to a lake without any navigation on and this is not even FSD version 12. FSD beta is now expected to launch in Europe in Q2 of next year. This is a big catalyst says Matt Smith but one which most people aren't tracking closely. This will help Tesla to sell more full cell driving packages to new customers which will somewhat impact Tesla's earnings. So that is certainly a catalyst, but the roads are slightly different in Europe than they are in the US and Canada. I grew up in Europe and I think full cell driving will probably struggle a little bit at least at first <laughs> in Europe because most of the data comes from the US. So unless FSD becomes much, much better by then, I don't really expect this to be a huge catalyst. But either way, it would be a positive for Tesla. Tesla's virtual power plant program is expanding. Eligible Powerwall owners in San Diego can now get paid to support the grid. So you can make money if you have a Tesla Powerwall. The end of a quarter rush is alive and well, look at this. This was at 8.46 p.m local time yesterday and this is the activity of new owners getting their Teslas. The Tesla rep told me this one location delivered 205 cars today. The lot was full earlier and now it's empty. The crew is staying till midnight and is refilling the lot for tomorrow. The latest delivery slots are scheduled for 10.30 p.m. The age of the combustion engine is coming to the end. You can see here uh, which countries will have phase outs and Norway, you can see here, is in red, and uh, they are going to do that by 2025, they say. And then you can see some of these other countries in green, like Sweden, they are going to do that by 2030. Then uh, you can see countries like Canada and a lot of Europe as well is supposedly targeting 2035. Ford CEO Jim Farley slams the UAW president Sean Fain. Sean has been on the TV more than Jake from State Farm. Ford's top executive says 300 to 500,000 supplier workers may face layoffs in the wake of the ongoing UAW strikes. Check out this FSD clip. So he says in the past builds my car would slam on the brakes and make me take over. This time it's slow to a nice safe manner and well, just watch. We are approaching a bicycle and there's going to be a car. Normally, FSD would just slow down, but here, wow, that was pretty impressive. Very smooth. I like to follow this account, Elon Alerts, on X slash Twitter. Uh, this, for example, shows me when Elon likes a post. This one, for example, is a political post that Elon liked. This way, if Elon later makes a political comment, you won't really be caught off guard because you'll probably see it coming because he might be liking other people's posts before posting something of his own. Troy says there's a chance Tesla sales in Europe could be lower in the third month of the quarter for the first time in 40 quarters because of two reasons. Number one, Model 3 high land supply issues. And number two, Tesla is intentionally evening out sales throughout the quarter. Troy does not see this as a problem. Automakers say the Biden administration's proposal to hike fuel economy standards through 2032 is not feasible and could cost automakers a total of more than $14 billion in fines. Well, then maybe they should hurry up and transition to EVs. The UAW workers dropped unfair labor practice charges against GM and Stellantis. These charges were originally filed on August 31st of this year. It appears that Tesla is doing some range testing with some load on the vehicle. Elon Musk just got himself involved in another political discussion. This is where it all started. Uh, he asked, is the German public aware of this? 
There are currently eight German NGO ships in the Mediterranean Sea collecting illegal immigrants to be unloaded in Italy. And this account responded to Elon, which is a uh, part of the Germany's government. This German account responds to Elon by saying yes, and it's called saving lives. Elon fires back by saying, so you are actually proud of it. Interesting. Frankly, I doubt that a majority of the German public supports this. Have you run a poll? Surely it is a violation of the sovereignty of Italy for Germany to transport vast numbers of illegal immigrants to Italian soil. Has invasion wipes, Elon says. Elon then also responded to this tweet. Uh, they did a poll, more than 80% of the German public say that there is a need of a stronger control of our European border in Italy. This government just ignores what we expect them to do. To which Elon says, if a government in a democracy goes against the will of the people, it should be voted out. So if you thought that a political backlash in the US was not great for Tesla, well, we might see one in Europe as well. Elon can obviously say what he wants and I support his right to say what he wants. Uh, just don't be surprised if we have a bit of a backlash sometime later on in Europe against Tesla. That is, if Elon continues to participate in these political discussions, and it may not be so much from the public, let's say, uh, the backlash, but it may be more from the politicians, perhaps. And if then the politicians start convincing the public that Elon is bad, some of them will think Elon is bad. Oh look, a Dano Dao test, except it's not from Dano Dao, it's from Dirty Tesla, and this child mannequin is completely fine. Monroe recently spent a week with the Genesis GV60 EV, and the videos are coming soon, I'm looking forward to seeing these. Now, the chances of this are low, but there is a tiny possibility that maybe, perhaps just maybe, Elon Musk is shooting at a Cybertruck. Probably no, but maybe. <laughs> this looks like from a James Bond movie. A reporter from Electric writes that Tesla quietly held an installer day, the latest addition to its series of X-Day events. The move comes as Tesla is starting to walk back its own energy installation operations and start to increasingly rely more on third-party installers for its energy business. With installer day, Tesla is looking to strengthen its community of certified installers and rely on them to deploy its solar and battery products. James thinks it's a smart move to allow the company to focus on building the products, which is where Tesla can add the most value without the logistical burdens of installation and its low margin slash high cost business, long overdue. I think once Tesla gets the product really right and that's working out really well, then Tesla can focus on these logistical tasks and operations as well. This overall is great news for EVs in the US and uh, therefore for Tesla as well. The US Energy Department is in talks to lend a record $1 billion to the developer of one of the country's largest lithium deposits in a push to build out domestic supply. And as I was recording this video, Troy published his final delivery estimate, which is 441,000. You can also see Troy's error rate, which is pretty good. Here is Troy's detail table. Pause if you would like to do so. And here is his detailed production table. Uh, pause if you like to take a look for a little bit longer. Interestingly, Troy expects Model S and Model X deliveries this quarter to be lower than the deliveries of the previous quarter. That is despite the huge price cuts. In red, you can basically see the actual Tesla deliveries. And then in green, you can see a Troy's estimate basically by how much he was off. And here you can see in this sort of goldish color, you can see the consensus delivery number. And then in blue here, you can see by how much uh, did Tesla stop price change immediately after the market opened? So for example, here you can see that Tesla uh, beat all of the delivery estimates and the stock rose the next day. Uh, so pause and take a look at this chart for a little bit longer if this interests you and check out uh, how Tesla stock reacted before. A Tesla bear just compared Tesla stock to some of the meme stocks. And Gary Black responds by saying, there's a huge difference between Tesla stock and these meme stocks. Tesla is more like Apple. 
Tesla has disrupted the automotive industry forever, and once EV adoption gets to 60% or so, Tesla mathematically becomes the largest auto company in the world, assuming it holds its EV share at 20%. I agree, and you can see some of my Tesla valuation assumptions on Patreon. Elon is making another political comment. He says the US Border Patrol just reported the highest number of recorded illegal immigrants in history at over 260,000 this month. The full number, including unrecorded, may be over half a million per month, which is the population of Wyoming. Canada's largest Tesla supercharger is now open in Richmond, BC, in Vancouver uh, metro uh, area. It has 40 V3 supercharger stalls, and I actually know exactly where this is. Maybe I'll go check it out in person. Gary Vlad just posted some positives and negatives for Tesla stock. One of the negatives that he's still expecting is further Tesla pricing risk. More discounts, basically. Over the long term, I do expect Tesla to keep cutting prices quite a few times, so price cuts never surprise me. My long-term average selling price expectations for Tesla are different compared to everyone else's. You may be surprised. You may see my expectations in my base model, which is available on Patreon. I also just uploaded another somewhat controversial video about Tesla, which is also available exclusively on Patreon. By joining my Patreon, you will get access to how much I think it is fair to pay per Tesla share each year between 2020 and 2033. If you sign up for the investor tier of support, you will also get my valuation model of Tesla stock with a 45 minute video walkthrough. And YouTube says you should watch this video next, but if you haven't finished watching that discussion about the future where Elon Musk participates, watch this one first. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Matt Fosius.